Well, it's the biggest game of the year. I know that's a little hyperbolic considering we're only, what, eight games into the season. But nonetheless, tomorrow's game in the Mile High City is a big one. It's a definite test for the Golden State Warriors as they pursue a fifth world title in 10 years. I got Kylan Mills with me. We're going to break down how the Warriors are doing. We're going to play some sound, talk about lineups, keys to the game. It's a mixed bag of goodies all coming up next for you. This, hi, Kylan, is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks just on betting on the favorite without a spread. It's that simple. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started you can follow kylan mills on all social media platforms at her name it's not hard it's actually the opposite of hard easy at kylan mills you can follow me cyrus sauces on threads at dog wild kylan great to see you how are you doing uh and i'll start i'll start off the show with this uh of course i'm gonna ask you something we did not prep for at all but it just hit me um how important in your opinion is tomorrow's game against the nuggets on paper it's huge. It's a massive test for the Warriors. I was going to say it's a statement game until you and I were talking a moment ago off the air about the injury report, uh, which you you can explain right now as well. But how big of a game is this to you? Is this does it have the the magnitude that I have in my head? Am I tripping? Your thoughts and how the hell are you, kids? Doing well, Cyrus. Good to see you. Uh, back to back days. We're going at this, yeah. and we're coming off of a Warriors win, so that's always a good thing. Um, I think that this is definitely marquee matchup, biggest we've seen so far in the Western Conference. But there are a couple of asterisks by it. Now, knowing the injury report is what it is, there was some new information that came out today. First. Jamal Murray will not play due to right hamstring tightness. It's something that's been lingering since the start of the season, according to uh, you know staff members with the Nuggets. And they just revealed today, actually, at practice, when Malone was talking to reporters, that he will not play. And they also believe this is longer than a one- or two-day injury. Jamal Murray likely to be out for a longer period of time. He did something to tweak it a little bit extra in Saturday's game they played against the Bulls. So I guess from what I read, is it something that like he kind Kind of had been dealing with it since the preseason hadn't been a hundred percent and then whatever happened Saturday you know he pulled it and they do believe it's going to be something more serious so Jamal Murray one of the best players on the Nuggets will not play in tomorrow's game against the Warriors so that automatically changes the complexion of this game because you're not mm-hmm. looking at both teams being a hundred percent Jamal Murray is a huge piece of, I mean, like I said, one of the best players in the team, a huge piece of what they do. So, you know, that does take a little bit of the edge off. You want to play best teams when they're at their best. Um, However, another factor is that the Warriors, Draymond Green, is listed as questionable due to personal reasons. That's out on the official NBA injury report as of tonight. Don't know what those personal reasons are. I hadn't heard anything about this in terms of any leaks as to something that might be going on with Draymond Green prior, uh, but that's something that also could have a major impact on the game if Draymond Green does not play. Um, And that leads to the next question. I know we're going to talk about some keys to the game, Cyrus, but if Draymond Green's not out, the big problem is how do the Warriors guard Nikola Jokic? But by the way, Nikola Jokic is listed as probable, but he's been dealing with a wrist injury He's expected to go, but keep an eye on that as well, because if for some reason Jokic gets pulled out of the game, then, you know, this isn't the matchup that we were thinking it was going to be. Uh, But if he does play, now there's a lot of question marks if the Warriors don't have Draymond Green. So to me, a lot of how big this matchup is hinges on what happens in terms of the injury report. That's going to be the big thing to me that makes this a medium game, a big game, a huge game. Uh, you know, already I think Jamal Murray being out takes it down a notch, but will Draymond Green play? And then is Nicole Jokic going to be cleared to go? Probably yes, but you never know. Things still do happen. So I think that's going to determine exactly how big of a game this is, how good of a litmus test this is for the Warriors. 
Yeah, it, it's um, the, the Jamal. Both those reports are, are very disappointing. Uh, the Jamal Murray news, um, basically, it, you know, the way I'm reading that is, OK, so Denver's not a full strength. Uh, so if they lose the game, they will not take it that seriously because they're missing their second right. best player. Yep. Um, and then the war the personal reasons. Like I'm trying to think of in the past, like what has gone on when a player has missed the game because of personal reasons. Um, yeah, I agree, D. Filipino, who writes in the chat. Um, that's lame. It is. I don't. I. I, I mean, where are the specifics in that? But whatever. Hopefully, uh, everything's fine with Draymond. And the thing Green. is, Draymond just spoke to the media, so like, I don't. It's just very odd. Don't know what you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Obviously, it, it things is. come up. Things come up all the time. Um, you know, in terms of a personal issue, family member. The only thing I can think is, you know, a family member who's sick, not well. I, I don't know. Um, but. It, Right. Like something going on with the kids. Right. Yeah. Kids. That's what I mean. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. And I that's just weird. like, like I said, I, I just am scrolling Twitter. And like I said, I reached out, sent a text as well, but I don't, you know, there's not really any indication as to what that personal reason may be. So you got to assume it's something short term, but still a big bummer if he's not able to play, but it's still a total question mark. I mean, questionable could go either way. Yeah. Um, and you talked about Draymond uh, talked to reporters not that long ago. Uh, this is one of the sound bites that's been making the rounds um, that that uh, he referenced. Uh, this is Draymond um, giving some love to the rookies, uh, which was I mean, look, this is kind of a lighthearted uh, attribution. We could talk about it afterwards. But um, uh, this is Dre. It's, it's interesting because he discusses how different rookies are now versus how they were maybe just, you know, 10 years ago when Dre was a rookie. Uh, but here is Draymond Green talking about the rookies. And again, at this time, not that long ago, uh, there were no personal reason potentially keeping him out of the Nuggets game. Here's Draymond. When you look at this rookie class, it doesn't really look like a rookie class. Like even our two rookies, like you put those guys in the game and they don't make mistakes that rookies make, you know, and, and it's the same thing like for the Thompson twins and, and uh, Wimby, you know, and you start to look down. this. even Mark, Marcus Sasser, like they don't look like rookies, you know, and so... I think it's incredible class, um, but the Thompson twins, like, I don't know, man. I, I feel a way about the Thompson twins and Wimby because those guys are making it much harder for me to continue to make all defensive teams as these young guys come in defending the way they're defending, you know? So um, I'm happy to see it, you know, happy to see young guys coming into this league, taking on the challenge of, of defending. You know, so many young guys come into this league, like, I got to score. It's all about scoring. How can I get my shot off? And it's such the wrong mindset to come in with. So it's good to see these young guys come in with a different mindset. Yeah, and and I don't know if, if there's much to read into that. Anything you want to add to Draymond's comments about how, in, in a jovial manner, uh, his defensive player of the year, or, or I'm sorry, the defensive, the all NBA defensive teams that he's normally accustomed to making uh, might be in jeopardy because of all these new players. I do want to add real fast that, um, Oscar Thompson is a player the Warriors really wanted. And if you watched that game last night, I think there's a good reason why. But uh, anything like uh, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I just – I do think there's something to be said about players coming in, especially in this rookie class and playing defense. I like the Thompson twins. Um, not in this rookie class, but I also just want to add in the Pistons game that I thought Cade Cunningham looks good. And I haven't yes. watched him extensively – but he's gotten a lot of heat on social media and on the internet. I know that his turnover numbers are very high. And I feel like every time I see him, there's someone like bashing him or speaking against him or the fan base is criticizing really? him. But I thought he looked good. I liked Cade Cunningham. Uh, I don't think maybe he's loose with the ball, but I still thought he, he just had to do so much on that Pistons team. Like my goodness, he's handling the ball. He's, you know, getting downhill. He's having to facilitate. He's having to grab boards. I just think with that Pistons team, the way it is and, and, you know, limping along, he has a big workload for a young player. So like, to me, the, the high turnover numbers aren't as big of a concern. I just wanted to mention that since we are talking about young players, I like the Thompson twins. I also like Kate Cunningham. Uh, did think it was interesting. Uh, we didn't see much of James Wiseman, which is something we haven't really touched on. I don't want to go too crazy, uh, about that, but I know that he is a player that a lot of fans are still following in terms of whether the Warriors made the right decision. Um, I mean, you know, it's something that you could still look at. Uh, but so, so far, not so good for him, uh, yeah. this season, but anyways, that's all, that's all. Oh, Kate Cunningham can't shoot. That's what Kevin McLean says. Yeah. Maybe, Kevin maybe McLean not. is a, is a hater though. I mean, he, I he know. not only Kevin. hates on Kate, 
He's sitting here bashing Kaminga in the chat. I do read all your comments, Kevin. And all I have to say to add to that is, were you this critical of Steph and Clay the rookie years? Because Kaminga is the exact same age. Um, the kid is young. And, 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 and again, I don't know if they're, if they're six and two to start the season without Kaminga. So he's had a I few agree. bad starts to the season. And, and again, people are focusing on these rebounding numbers and maybe there's some validity to it. But if you're watching the game from beginning to end, I'm not seeing him lackadaisical. I'm not seeing a lack of effort. Um, I, I think a part of the reason why the rebounding numbers have not picked up this year is because he keeps getting these defensive assignments of the most explosive wing player on the other side. I mean, uh, in, in that Pistons game, I think I saw him guarding uh, Cunningham. We saw him on the perimeter guarding three-point shooters where he's not getting assignments that leave him in the post, that leave him in the paint to grab those boards. If it was, If he was being lackadaisical, like last year there was – blatant examples like that there was that one game i think in the king series right or was it the lakers it was one of the other where he just was yeah. standing there and and kylan you remember that i'm sure right yep. where the ball yep. is just sitting there and he's just watching it it's like dude get your head in the game you gotta you gotta yep. be aggressive i'm not that. seeing those lapses mentally from him this year um Agreed. i completely agree I, I even though i would like to see the numbers be higher i will agree i don't think there's been egregious mental lapses or no. opportunities that he's passing up to run on the wall so i agree with that i still think there could be improvements but you're right yeah i and I, wiseman thing just my opinion i don't think there's much to say about it it's just one of those chapters in warriors history that it didn't work out um what, 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 the one thing i'll add to that is the 2020 draft was was gnarly it was weird in the sense that the pandemic was going on so nobody was really scouted in, in an efficient manner like there were no in-person interviews everything was done via zoom um there were no in-person workouts or if there were there were held few and far between because travel even was a difficult thing um so the scouting wasn't there the talent wasn't there um, to put it in perspective, talking about Kaminga, Kaminga would be the number one pick in that 2020 draft. Whether or not that implies the draft was really weak or just that's how good Kaminga is, I'll leave it up to you to, to interpret that. But it's just, what are you going to do? You know, the Warriors blew it. Uh, you know, there's nothing really to, to say to defend the Wiseman draft in hindsight. But we got Gary Payne the second back, right? I mean, when I say we, I mean, just, you know, I'm not the Warriors. I'm not a part of that, obviously. But, you know, the Warriors got Gary Payne the second back, you know, so at least they salvaged that part of it. And when you look at GP2 play this year, I think it's a solid salvage. So I'm, I'm going to be positive in that yeah. note. Uh, anything else, Kylan, before we come back with your key, our keys to the game for what the Warriors have to do to beat the Nuggets? That's it. We got some right. keys to the yeah, game we do. after this. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about prize picks, um, which is daily fantasy made easy. Let me get the old banner out. Uh, where are you, prize picks? There you are. And it's all about, again, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's fun daily fantasy sports where you're betting on whether a player uh, will score more or less than a certain amount, whether they'll grab more or less than re a certain number of rebounds. It's not just basketball either. You can bet on football players. You can bet on soccer players. Um, you can pick one player from different sports because you got to pick a minimum of two players, a maximum of six players. And if you nail all six bets, uh, you can win up to 25 times what you put in, which is incredible. Um, it, it's fun. The payouts are super fast and easy. If you've, if you've ever dealt with those sketchy like overseas uh, gambling websites, you know how difficult it can be to collect your winnings. You don't have that, that experience with prize picks. In fact, I think they got Apple Pay set up. Just tap, tap on your phone and you, and you get to put money in. You get to put take money out. It's super easy. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. If you're in California, it's legal. Go have fun and make sure you use the code locked on NBA for the first deposit match of up to $100. That means whatever you put in when you first start playing, they'll match it up to 100 bucks. You have double what you put into play with. Again, go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match of up to $100. Hundred dollars. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day for the everydayers. It's the biggest game of the year. Warriors Nuggets tomorrow. I got Hall of Famer Rick Barry joining me for the post game show. Uh, Rick is going to pay close attention again. I when it comes to basketball opinions. I don't think there's anyone better. The, the dude knows the game as well as anyone else. Um, so stay tuned for that. But right now, Kylan Mills joins me. Always a pleasure, Kylan. You can follow Kylan on all social media platforms at her name. It's super easy. Kylan Mills. You can follow me, Cyrus Otz, on threads 
at Dog Wild. I look, look, dude, Kevin Prentice is just on fire in this chat. Look at you, buddy. You just love to stir the pot. Anyways, uh, Kylan, keys to the game. Um, the Warriors play the Nuggets. I'm going to get the line in a second, unless you know what the spread is right now. Uh, but while I pull that up, in your opinion, what do the Warriors have to do if they want to win this game and really send a statement, not just to the Nuggets, but to the rest of the NBA, that when you're talking about the, the, the legitimate contenders for the world title this year, you better count the Warriors among them. What are the keys? I mean, the number one key anytime the Warriors play the Nuggets has to be shutting down Nikola Jokic. He is a player who's so difficult to stop because not only can he score, he can grab rebounds, but then he is an unbelievable passer for a big. Sorry, my dogs have some so thoughts as well about it's ambience. Nikola That's ambiance, baby. I love it. Um, but that's what makes him so difficult to stop because you can shut him down scoring. He can score in a variety of ways. And then he's so good at getting those passes off. Like his ability to facilitate his vision on the court is so special that he can get other players involved as well. So to me, the number one key is figuring out how to shut down Nikola Jokic. That is going to be very, very challenging if the Warriors don't have Draymond Green. And that's my biggest area of focus with or without Draymond. But with Draymond not playing, that suddenly becomes a huge issue because of the Warriors' lack of front court depth, which is something we've talked about. They're mm. not the biggest team in the NBA. Uh, so who would take on that workload? Um, you know, you also have to factor in that Andrew Wiggins hasn't been playing well. He's not a player you can rely on defensively, uh, at least not the way he's been playing lately, to take on a massive workload. Um, so, like I said, if you're taking Draymond out of the mix – to me, Wiggins, I don't feel 100% confident in terms of coming out and playing the, you know, really stalwart defense he's played in the past. I hope that he works through this rut, but it hasn't been working for him lately. Suddenly, I think the biggest thing is going to be for the Warriors to play good team defense and also figure out how to shut down Jokic. Um, you know, when you look at the bigs on the Warriors, like who, who are you lining up with Jokic if there's no Draymond Green? To me, that is a big, big, big problem. Uh, you can throw Jonathan Kaminga in the mix. Like, that's one player that I immediately think of. Like, can he take some rep reps on Jokic? But Kaminga's still very young. He still has a mm. lot to learn. I, and I just, I do not like the Looney Jokic matchup. Uh, I, I just think he's too slow. He's honestly not big enough. And I just, just without Draymond, I struggle to figure out what the Warriors rotations are going to be shutting him down. And I have a couple other keys, but still, I want to know what you think about what is a game plan against Jokic if Draymond Green isn't playing? Because to me, that's a huge concern. Yeah. So, well, first of all, if Draymond's not playing, I, the, the spread, by the way, the Nuggets are favored. This is courtesy of the official sports book of Locked On, and that's the FanDuel sports book. Uh, the Nuggets are favored by three and a half. This is despite the fact that uh, Jamal Murray is out. Uh, for tomorrow's game. That's not a questionable, by the way. I'm seeing a few people in the chat bring up uh, Jamal Murray. He is not playing. He's out. I believe you said Draymond Green is questionable. Is that correct? With questionable, the... yep. Okay, so we don't know for sure what's going to happen. So it's 50, there, but right 50 now... we don't know. Exactly. But I'm just saying, 50% uh, chance that he doesn't play, then it's like, mm. someone in the chat, there were a couple of funny comments in the chat. There's a lot uh, of Draymond funny Green, who said someone, oh, Subterranean Edward said, Dre sucks, but he does push Jokic around. That just made me laugh. Uh, and Sean Stanley, one of our uh, regular yeah. listeners, viewers, Dr. Sean. appreciate you uh, popping in the chat. And I would agree. You can't shut Jokic down completely. Like, that's not going to happen. You can challenge him. You can try to, you know, force him to take difficult shots, as you mentioned. I was going to say you can try to slow him down, but he likes to slow down the game, so I don't know that that necessarily is the exact tactic. I would actually say the opposite. The Warriors should try to run the floor and get transition buckets. But, uh, sorry, Cyrus, what do you think about trying to shut down Jokic? No, don't be sorry. You're, you're good. Uh, At least I, challenge I, Jokic. Do something to try to slow him down. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the Warriors played the Pelicans a few games back, and that mm -hmm. game, the reason why I bring it up is because it was a friendly reminder of how strong Draymond Green is. Zion Williamson pushes Dude, Zion everyone. Zion is a but truck. Not with Draymond, though. He was not pushing yeah, Draymond no, around. Draymond is a strong dude. I think I've talked about this on the show before where, you know, mm -hmm. it, back when they let us get into the locker room a lot easier than they do now, um, I still am just mind blown and when I see that dude where, he, where he's not dressed just because – he he's just a specimen. I mean, he is a physical beast of a human being. And there's a reason why the Warriors keep paying him and keep, you know, putting preference on him when it comes to important personnel decisions. They value him tremendously for very good reasons. So but you can't play him for the whole game against Jokic if he plays because foul trouble is going to come into play. Uh, he's going to get exhausted. Jokic will wear whoever defends him down. 
Um, easy to forget that Jokic is also like the, you know, the point guard of the Nuggets, right? He's going to bring the ball down a lot. So when we come back, we got a, we got another sponsor to give love to. I'm going to reveal my thoughts on what the, the Warriors, I think, are going to have to do um, in tomorrow's game if they want to win. Um, and, and again, that's a huge one. Uh, so I'll discuss that. We've and I want to get to a couple of good points that were made yeah. in the chat, too, after we take a quick break. A lot of people had some some good things that I would also point out in terms of making him work on defense. And that's where I also mentioned running the floor, wearing him yeah. out. There are some other things the Warriors can do, but we'll the words we'll get out of my mouth. That. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Absolutely. Uh, but first, let's give some love to FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, it's a fantastic promo they got going on because new customers can get $150 in bonus bets, good as cash. It goes right into your account that you can play with in terms of gambling. Um, all you have to do is win a $5 money line bet. What that means is, is you got to place five bucks down on a team to win. It might not be a team. I, uh, when it comes to money line, yes. So you just have to bet on a team and win the bet for five bucks. Uh, when there is no spread, that means you could pick the heaviest favorite on the planet, whether you're looking at an NFL game, an NBA game, and just win that $5 because the odds won't be favorable but you'll immediately get 150 bucks in cash. I wouldn't recommend playing the money line for tomorrow's Warriors Nuggets game because that one is a toss up. Um, but find a game that's super easy, place that $5 bet down, win your bet, and you get $150 if your team wins. It's that simple. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NBA and the NFL. You are locked on Warriors. Your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, one final segment here of Locked On Warriors. You can follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms at her name, Kylan Mills. You can follow me, Cyrus Otzes, on threads at Dog Wild. You just mentioned a moment ago, uh, in my opinion, the biggest strategy for, for playing the Nuggets and playing Jokic is to flip the script. And what I mean by that is make him work defensively. That is where a Kavon Looney is a huge detriment. It's not yeah. just that, that Kavon struggles uh, defending Jokic. I mean, look, you're going to have to play him for a while because he is one of your few big bodies. Uh, I know someone in the chat said, don't bring up Trace Jackson Davis. Sorry, but you're going to have to see him play some minutes uh, in tomorrow's game. He, he's actually solid. I, I really wish um, Kerr would give him a, a consistent 10, 15 minutes a night. He, he's not a negative out there. I... I I don't see the Warriors struggling when he's playing minutes. And the more he plays, the more experience he has for the postseason, right? So I hope they play him um, and, and give him some minutes. Dario Saric, though, I think is going to be a huge key to this. Um, not just defensively. Uh, look, he's not going to be able to handle Jokic, obviously. Um, but no matter what you do, you're going to have to make Jokic work. But on the other side, you got to make Jokic play defense. You have to. It, it's it's it, like as good of shape as he may look now, relatively speaking, compared to how he used to be baby Huey. I mean, the guy was just looked completely out of shape. The guy did not look like he belonged on a basketball court. At least he looks like he belongs now, but it doesn't mean he's like in tip top, you know, Olympic athlete level shape where he's running track. Like you can still wear him down. And if that means uh, running a twin tower lineup out there of, of, uh, of Dario Saric and Kaminga getting Dario Saric and Trace Jackson Davis, because TJD does have a decent post-up game. He, he can actually dribble the ball. I don't know if you noticed that, by the way. Like, he's got handles. Um, so that, to me, is going to is gonna be the recipe, is how are you going to make Jokic work so that when the third and fourth quarter comes, those three-point shots, which normally fall for him, he's too tired to drain those consistently. And obviously, you got to play aggressive with him. And then we also got to talk about Stephen Curry, who's got an MVP campaign going right now. I know we're only eight games into the season. It does represent close to 10% of the total sample size of the regular season, but he's playing lights out. They're going to need that again. I, I want to, before we get to the Steph stats, there is another uh, a component to the Nuggets, though, that has gotten better than the, the version the Warriors saw in 2022 that they beat in the first round in five games. And that's Aaron Gordon. This is where the Warriors really are going to have the, their work cut out for him is let's say you handle Jokic and let's say somehow he ends up having a bad night. Like he scores 18 points, you know, he shoots the ball bad. Aaron Gordon has improved tremendously. That is the 1B of that front court that you got to deal with. And I think that's where a lot of members of Dub Nation, myself included, have expressed some frustration is that when you're when you're putting together this roster and you're thinking about the elite teams you got to you got to face up. 
I mean, the, the Nuggets have two big guys you got to deal with. Um, so I don't have an answer right now. I, I'm very curious to see what happens tomorrow, but I don't know what the answer is in terms of dealing with both of them. Uh, Wiggins is going to have to come up huge. I, I think if Wiggins continues this torrid play that we've seen so yeah. far, maybe I don't know if torrid is the right word. I guess it depends on the slang usage. But in my case, I'm mean, meaning it in a negative connotation. Uh, Wiggins has to step up. Um, this iteration we're seeing of Wiggins right now, it, whatever is going on with him, uh, flip that script, please. Okay, let's get a 180 there in terms of, I don't know if the effort is the issue. I don't know if it's a mental issue. I don't know if he's just going through a slump. Um, what do you think about the Aaron Gordon component of this? Because I, I don't think that part of it is answered either. The Warriors have their hands full. I, I'm curious about tomorrow. What are your thoughts about that? The other big the Nuggets have. Yeah, no, I think that the bigs are going to are the biggest challenge for the Warriors because of the things we talked about in terms of this, their lack of size and, and, you know, the fact that their front court is on the smaller side. And you got Kaban Looney, who isn't an offensive threat, as you pointed out, which is a problem. Um, I don't think the Warriors are going to stop their bigs, to be frank. Um, I think that they need to just lean into their counter strategy, which is, as you pointed out, making Jokic work defensively and then mm -hmm. also running the floor to me pushing the pace is going to be the Warriors best friend because Nikola Jokic likes to work in the offense he's not the fastest or fittest player in the NBA so another way you make him work on defense is also to run the floor and to try to really push the pace where the Warriors have smaller quicker guys who can outrun him and mm -hmm. then John Stanley is absolutely right and I saw this comment earlier and wanted to point it out as well because we saw this as an effective strategy in the Warriors Western Conference semifinal series against the Lakers. Uh, when the Warriors switched to putting Draymond Green on Anthony Davis and they started drawing him out with high ball screens is when they started opening up the play in the paint and they really started to be much more effective in shutting AD down. That's kind of the similar comparison I made in my head. Not that AD and Jokic are super similar players, but I'm just saying it's the strategy of when you do have a talented big like that, that you do want to make work on defense and you want to get them out from underneath the basket, pulling them out and getting them onto those pick and rolls and into the high ball screens away from the basket and working in those types of defensive plays that, you know, absolutely could be, you know, a strategy for the Warriors that can be effective. Um, so I think Sean made a great, I think that was a great point. Um, and then I think pushing the pace in transition is going to be super important. Mm -hmm. for the Warriors. Also, being aggressive on the glass. We've seen the last couple games when the Warriors are winning the rebounding battle, they are effective when they give up the glass by large margins, they make it very difficult to win. And then I also think the other thing you pointed out and Andrew Wiggins playing well is going to be huge without Wiggins defensive prowess. That makes me much more concerned because if he can pick up more of the defensive workload on some of these guys that just will help the team the Warriors massively all the way around. So I think we mm -hmm. need a big game from Wiggs. Um, if Draymond's in the great game, he's got to, you know, at least the minutes he's in, they've got to get him to try to challenge Jokic, run the floor, get him out on some high ball screens, get him away from the basket, get him running, get him working on defense. Uh, and I think that's all you could do. I don't think the Warriors are necessarily going to stop Aaron Gordon and Nicole Jokic. Like, you're talking about putting in a rookie, Trace Jackson Davis. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know that any of these guys are necessarily going to stop them, as some folks in the chat pointed out. Um, yeah. But I think the Warriors' speed of pushing the pace could be definitely key. Yeah. Get and let's not forget one player that's – Yeah, and one player that's really stepped it up in, in terms of being an underrated interior presence for the Warriors has been Moses Moody. Due to strong – um, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we see extensive minutes from him. The one thing with Aaron Gordon that is a positive from the Warriors' perspective is the guy is not a good three-point shooter. So unlike Jokic, True. where no matter where he is on the court, you worry about him, you're, you're, you're sticking to him like glue if you can. You can't just leave him sitting out there shooting threes because he'll burn you. But Aaron Gordon is a career 32% three-point shooter. And this year through eight games, um, he's only shooting, I believe, 25%. Uh, from deep, if my stats are correct, uh, that's what it shows there. Um, and he's not a, he, again, it, last year was one of his better years as a three point shooter. He shot 34.7%, second highest of his career. But the, the tw what we're seeing this year is more in line with how he shoots. So you're going to have to live and die with Aaron Gordon hitting those threes. You're going to have to keep him out of the paint. Um, at least the strategy with him is simple, right? Um, interest, interested to see what happens tomorrow. Did you pull up, you know, Stephen Curry again, he's having an MVP campaign. 
Uh, some of the national uh, uh, media publications were uttering those similar phrases, uh, I noticed as well. Um, have you looked at stats? We talked about a little bit. Like, how's Steph doing this year? Like, are his numbers even more yeah. egregiously amazing than normal? Is it on par by his standards? Uh, what are you seeing with the stats? I know you did some research there. I think. Yeah, um, Steph is averaging just under 31 points per game, which is on the higher end in terms of his career. It wouldn't be the highest uh, overall at the end of the season. Back in 2021, he averaged 32 points per game, but is certainly up there and right in the range of his outstanding 2015-2016 MVP campaign um, as well. He's shooting 53% from the floor. 47 and a half percent from oh. three because mm. he is a freak uh, of nature and <laughs> just under five rebounds per game, which is actually pretty on par for where he's been at the last couple of years. His low, rebounding actually. Numbers have been yeah. up uh, above five, like the last since the 2017, 18 season. So that's an area of his game that he's really picked up. Uh, assist numbers are down, which is something I actually noticed the other day. And I thought that was interesting. But immediately I thought, is that the Chris Paul effect? Exactly. That's, that's something that, that crossed that my is. mind immediately. Yes. But 4.3 assists per game compared to the last couple seasons, 6.3, 5.8, 6.6. Um, he is averaging a steal per game. Um, and then his turnover turnovers are right about where they usually are. Uh, but I mean, I think that you're looking at him in the discussion. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. In terms of compared to where he's at in past years, he's, you know, top five, I think, in all of those categories in terms of his his numbers, aside from his assist numbers. Um, so I think he has to be in the conversation at this point, still early in the season, but Steph has been outstanding as of late. So you love to see it. And our, and our negative Nancy here, uh, Kevin McLean, adding that, of Kevin. course, of course, except uh, Steph's assist turnover ratio is down. You know, in all honesty, players like Steph, like Jordan, are the reason why I'm in the very small minority of people who don't give that much credence to assist turnovers like I, I know it's an important stat I hear Steve Kerr mentioning it all the time uh, I, I've heard you mention that a, a few times on the show as well um going back to last year I but like players like Steph and Jordan are why like I that's one of the last things I look at in all honesty maybe that makes me a complete nut job I don't know but uh but I know Chris Paul has been excelling I think he's, he's on a four game streak is that correct where he hasn't had one turnover yeah I don't know that's, it's, that's insane it's <laughs> that's absolutely insane that is crazy um you know, I pulled up some stats. We're going to, by the way, the Guy Santos thing. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? I personally love that the Warriors signed him. And they kind of had to do that to get him out of his Brazilian contract. Uh, they weren't going to let him go unless he was going to get a guaranteed deal. He gets a three-year deal with the Warriors. The negative to that, in my opinion, is you're not going to see uh, much fruition from that this season. Guy Santos is more of a long-term project. Um, I'm sure some people would have liked for that 14th roster spot to be used on a player who can impact the team immediately. Good news is the Warriors have a 15th roster spot still open. Um, I really wish Usman Garuba was a little more in play. I just want to see the dude out there play. I mean, at a minimum, Usman Garuba can just get six fouls on Jokic and at least like you just make his life hell, you know, like smack him upside the head once or twice while you're out there, you know, like just just make life difficult for Jokic. I wish we saw a player like Garuba a little more, but there's also, it's so hard to get the minutes. Um, but what are your thoughts on Guy Santos? Uh, I think it was a good signing for the Warriors, but I did want to quiz you and we got to go yeah. real quick. Not on the Santos con, uh, not on that topic. Uh, who do you think is above Steph Curry right now in points per game? He's fourth in the league, averaging just under 31. Yeah. And oh, the the NBA? Above him. Yeah, in the NBA. Well, I know Luka Doncic is ahead of him. Yeah. Uh, is Tyrese Maxey ahead of him? No, but Tyrese is having a great year, but no. One of the guys ahead of him actually surprised me. He was having a great year, and I hadn't honestly played super say who? attention. Uh, so leading the NBA right now in points per game is Joel Embiid, and then Donovan Mitchell is actually second yeah. in the NBA, averaging 32.5 points per game. He's having an unbelievable year. But Steph right now, top five in scoring, made the most three-pointers by a long shot, certainly deserves to be in the conversation. Sorry, I'd wanted to look that up because I hadn't looked up where he falls in terms of the league picture. Yeah. Um, well, and the biggest reason... 34 minutes, shoot. Yeah, and, the, and the, I know, and the biggest reason why I... I, I to me, Steph is is easily your leader right now for the MVP is you look at, you name all those other players, you bring up Jokic, you bring up Giannis. Steph is the only one among all those players where except maybe Donovan Mitchell might fall into this too, but there's no clear cut second best player, yeah. right? Like, like it's Steph, 
running this whole yep. ship. And uh, like the respect has to be given for that. Do you want to real quick before we go? Uh, I'm, I, I, the reason why with Guy Santos, I bring him up because uh, we're going to get Kevin Dana on the show soon to really break down the impact of Guy Santos. He's literally the expert when it comes to Guy. So uh, we're going to save that that topic for another day, uh, maybe in early December when the Warriors have a week off because of the tournament, unless they're in the tournament. That's a whole other uh, uh a whole other topic. Um, do you want to know who what the most efficient uh, five man lineups are as you wrap up the show? Are you curious? Uh, yes, but you have forty five seconds to spit. Sounds it out. good. So I'll go <laughs> minimum of three games played because uh, we don't want to use like just very tiny samples. But um, so minimum three games played. The the most efficient Warriors five man lineup right now with a plus minus of four is Steph, Draymond, Wiggins, Looney, and Moody. So basically, it's your starting five, but swap Moses Moody for Clay Thompson, and you have your best team out there with a minimum of three okay. games, and which is interesting, right? And then the second most with a minimum of three games played together is Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Dario Saric, Gary Payton the second, and Jonathan Kaminga. That's your second unit, only Moody and Clay Thompson swapping roles. Interesting. Very hmm. interesting. All right, hmm. Cy. Good episode. Hmm. Hmm. Food for thought. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, we'll be back at this tomorrow. Warriors Nuggets. How are you feeling, Kyle? Are they going to win? Yes. What's your prediction? Without Jamal Murray, I think the Warriors are going to win. It, what if Draymond doesn't play? I still think the Warriors win. It's kind Let's of a go. hot take, but I'm going to go with it. Let's go with it. I'm with you as well. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Warriors Nuggets tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ending the